And uh, let's get started by just taking a look at slide number nine. And uh, what we'd like to cover today are uh, to cover three key characteristics that help make project dashboards meaningful. It's the kind of information that we choose to either represent on the dashboard or choose to uh, not represent on the dashboard uh, adhere to these three characteristics that help us make successful projects. And also to differentiate the difference between a project being on course versus on the course. How do we know that a project is headed in the right direction? How can dashboards help us steer the project into the right direction for success? And also, there are a lot of things uh, that can be included in dashboards, and often dashboards can be pretty overwhelming. I don't know if that's been your experience. But so many details can actually lose the central message. So what we want to do also is to be able to differentiate the critical few dashboard measures, the kind of information that's represented on a dashboard, from what potentially can be the trivial many and those that don't help us run a successful project. And finally, we're going to look at the importance of including feedback from the people actually working on the project, from the stakeholders that are dependent on the outcomes of the project, as a means to provide both qualitative and quantitative information about the status of a project, particularly having that status help inform, well, what are we going to do differently on Monday morning? So let's take a look at slide number 10. Here we're looking at uh, an example. Perhaps some of you have read about this in, in uh, the press. A little over a year ago, uh, the United States Air Force canceled what was known as the Expeditionary Combat Support System. Just canceled it after $1 billion had been wasted. And, and the, the assessment, in, in short, by the controller of the United States Air Force said, you know, we're approaching seven years since we've been spending money on this expended system, and I'm personally appalled at the limited capabilities that the project has produced relative to that amount of investment. That's that's a, a, quite an indictment, isn't it? And, and a disappointment after a billion dollars spent. In fact, another quote was that it was one of the most egregious examples of mismanagement in history. Well, how could how could this be? I'm sure some of you have some reasons, but why why would a reasonably planned project using a dashboard, project dashboard, how, how could it possibly fail, even though we did have a dashboard? Take a look at slide 11. Let's examine that a little bit more closely. On this United States Air Force program, there was a government mandate. And the mandate said that the dashboard had to include detailed status information that would be provided to the Def Department of Defense uh, Chief Information Officer. And that CIO was required to review that dashboard, post it publicly, so all of this uh, unfolded before the public's eyes, along with the CIO's personal assessment of the risk status. In other words, what are the chances of something going wrong to keep this project from being successful? And that assessment was supposed to be not only reviewed, but posted publicly on a quarterly basis and closely monitored by the DOD CIO. The end uh, assertion, though, uh, the claim by the Air Force, is despite all that government mandate, they just didn't have enough insight into the project's implementation. And after all, what are dashboards for if they're not to give us that sort of insight that informs management action? So a quick, if you took a quick look at what kind of information the dashboard for that project, that failed project, that canceled project after a billion dollars, what it showed was that even at the very end, the project was rated only at moderate risk. So why is that? And what do we need from, from dashboards? If we take a look at slide 11, so, excuse me, slide 12, the upper right-hand corner, you may recognize that image as being a historic image, one that shocked many of us, and it's of the uh, Challenger disaster. And uh, my associate, Dr. Robert Shrett, was on the Disaster Review Board. In, in fact, uh, Dr. Shrett has written on decision-focused dashboards, and I draw a great deal from some of the work that he's done on this. How is that decisions are made despite dashboard information that lead to failures? Are dashboards actually part of the problem, or are they actually part of the solution? Well, think about your experience on projects. And how often have you experienced a situation where the decision maker, at whatever level, simply doesn't want to hear bad news? I know some of you are, 
or nodding your head that you've experienced that firsthand. And so there are often consequences to that sort of uh, value uh, or perception about what's important. If, if the decision maker is averse to bad news, maybe they actually make sure that bad news doesn't show up on the dashboard, or we may be intimidated and choose not to include it on the dashboard because we don't want a negative reaction from the leadership. Or if it is included, often it's just simply ignored, it's marginalized, maybe even we have a happy face and we spin it positively as bad news is good news. In other situations, the kind of information that appears on program dashboards, decision makers simply don't understand what kind, what the information is telling them. Sometimes it's because it's, you know, you can't see the forest through the trees. There's just too much information or it's presented in a way that more confuses rather than informs. Or where the information really doesn't have much to do with the decision being made. So it's really about providing meaningful decision to decision makers. Hence the topic today, decision focused dashboards. How do we present information on the dashboard that well informs decisions that need to be made on projects for them to be successful. If we turn our attention to slide number 13, imagine being on the cockpit of a modern airliner. What we see here in the image at the bottom of the slide on, on uh, slide 13 is a display, uh, a cockpit control panel, if you will. Think for a moment and perhaps even jot down a couple of your thoughts as to what problem is being solved with the kind of information that we see on a dashboard like this or a cockpit control panel. Well, you know, pilots are thinking about are they too high or are they too low? If they're too high, they may run the risk of colliding with another aircraft. If they're too low, they may run the risk of colliding with the ground or an obstruction. We're looking at whether we're on track, on course, and on the course. We're looking at a lot of information that's important, and only information that is going to help the pilot decide what do I do next. How do I anticipate the next action to take? And isn't that similar in certain ways of what we need as project and program managers? And, and when, when is it that we need that information? How soon do we need the information to take some sort of corrective action? So as we take a look at slide number 14, to enumerate what I believe to be three key characteristics of the kind of information that should be included on dashboards and think about this as a litmus test so that if you take a look at a dashboard that you have today, is it that information and only that information that that matters matters to the kinds of decisions that are going to be made, particularly the kind of decisions that have to be made in the short term, ones that have to be taken uh, expeditiously so that the results of the action taken will have an effect, a favorable effect in time. Uh, or is it just too late? So the emphasis is about making a decision well informed by information on the dashboard that provides active management control. It means what are we going to do differently? What are we going to do next? How are we going to behave differently on Monday morning after viewing the dashboard today? And it needs to be timely so that if an action is taken, we are informed to make the decision and that the decision to act takes effect, that the effect of our actions is is timely enough so that there is a favorable result, that we avert a risk or that we uh, we are able to terminate a problem expeditiously. So let's take a closer look at some of these points, beginning on slide 15, in terms of timely information. You know, the reality of, of uh, uh, my world that when I spent uh, several decades uh, running projects for a Fortune 50 company, often I was seeing information uh, that told me more about what was behind me than what was ahead of me. And as a result, I experienced collisions. You know, we, we didn't know that there was a, a problem or a risk to be averted in the, ahead of us. Why? It's because the information that arrived before my eyes wasn't sufficiently timely. And by the time I received the